Hello there, this is Infinity, and it is currently 10.25 on the 31st of March in the Pacific, uh, and that is p.m., by the way, so 10.25 p.m. in the Pacific, and we are almost at the end of March, and it's been a wild ride, has it not? Really intense month, you guys. All across the world, lots has changed uh, at the end of this first set of uh, three months here. And we're going into a new month. It is a, a fire month. It is a, a, a fire and earth month with Aries and Taurus uh, going into this into this month here and uh, what we're doing here tonight is pulling a few cards. We're gonna get started with uh, Oracle cards. We're gonna do the Archangel Oracle and the Angels of Abundance and the Hermetic Tarot for each of the signs. So I would suggest you listen to the entire thing as we're of course, all one. Your this could you you may be uh, feeling more of your Earth or your I'm sorry your your Sun or your Moon sign or your Ascendant sign. So it's better to know what those are. If you know your Moon sign, you can look that up online. I mean, if you don't know your Moon sign, you can look that up online. And you just need to know your birth time. Uh, it's more precise with the moon because the cycle is faster than with the sun. So, or you could just go by the sun sign. You can just go with it. It's not that, you know, it doesn't, you don't need, we don't need to make it all that complicated. You might relate to all of it. Let's see what happens. Cards lately have been ridiculously on point and there's also been some technical issues going on. Uh, yesterday I recorded a whole thing working from and reading about the the devil card uh we're not done with that i had it planned all along to read from the kabbalistic tarot textbook that i have oh excuse me let me get it out right now get my energy acclimated here yawning doesn't always mean tired it means acclimating to energy <laughs> oh, and your body's just gonna like ah one of those things. <laughs> uh, it can also mean that somebody's taking from your energy, from your life force energy. If you start to suddenly yawn when you start talking to somebody and you're just like, damn, I wasn't tired a minute ago and all of a sudden I can't stop yawning. That person's siphoning from you energetically. Whether they know it or not, that's what's happening. It can also happen if you start suddenly sneezing and you didn't before and you just went into some place or somebody came into your place or energy, whatever. It can be spontaneous sneezing, yawning are definitely things that are indications of something going on or getting cold suddenly. If your body gets really cold, if you have all of a sudden a hollow feeling in your chest, either from the front or the back, these are all indications that you are being um, extrapolated from energetically. If you can feel that, some sometimes you just don't feel good or you get really tired. It could be that simple. Um, but it could be very specific and the, cle the clearer and, and the more healed you are in your body and energy system, the easier it's going to be to pick up on what's going on with your body in, in the moment. So there you go. Anyway, <laughs> so that's what my body's doing. I'm kind of acclimating to what's going on here. It's not to say that I'm a little tired, but I'm not like ready for bed or anything. Um, and when you start talking and moving energy, your body just kind of tends to, to do that. Okay. So we're going to start with our fire sign. So Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, you guys. So this could be for your moon or your sun sign or your ascendant sign. And... We're going to start with our Archangel Oracle. So this is a full deck. I've returned all the cards to the deck from my last reading. We're going to shuffle some cards here. 
again this is for the fire sign this is just a this is a general reading for the light body collective and and for the for the time the period of april 2020 this is uh for an, any and all incarnates we're just separating them out by elements uh, because each of the different elements, depending on where your pendulum is more being thrown at this time of regulating and transmutation and acclimation and resistance and flow and all of these different things that's going on with the, with the, uh, with the collective. Oh, I just had a couple fall. I had three fall. Wow. Okay. Uh, yes, we're using all three I just heard. So we're going to take these three. Uh, so anyway, during this time of great transmutation and paradigm shifts and timeline shifting and consciousness shifting and people getting more spiritual, people escaping more into things, it just, it's all over the place with people, truly people acclimating and figuring things out in different ways and having uh, this this time really affecting people in different ways we're seeing a lot of fear come up which is obviously natural it's very natural when it comes to this stuff that's going on with money and homes and and uh what else money homes health obviously are all the the really a family loved ones uh, all of all of the big pillars of our foundation that holds up the construct of our programming of our lives and a lot of people saying this we've been too complacent we haven't been paying attention we are just way too spoiled we are just like people are just going holy shit like tripping out in all sorts of different ways and we are we knew it those of us in the spiritual community knew that it was coming the great awakening different and major paradigm shifts coming for us and at us in the new uh decade of 2020 but we we didn't know what the picture how the picture would be painted to to create this catalyst in the in the collective and although it is really harsh and it's not pretty and it's really difficult and and again for those on the front lines in hospitals uh, my my heart and my my energy go out to you all um, I <laughs> I want to help and it's frustrating I know I can but I also know I wouldn't be allowed to if I my my instinct is to rush to the nearest hospital that I know is dealing with whatever a, a hard time and and get in there and and help because I know that I can but I know they wouldn't let me and they would probably lock me up if I told them I was there so I I can't really do anything I'm not going to be able to help in this regards in this regard with helping people with COVID-19 until people start coming to me and I just have to not let it get to me too too much and I just got done watching this piece about the front lines and the nurses and the doctors and it was tough it was it was tough to watch because they're really upset they're overwhelmed they know that it's not even close to being over they don't feel like they are protected they're watching their colleagues drop and need to be intubated and some of them dying and the system getting overwhelmed it's just really intense <laughs> it's really intense so uh so anyway we're all seeing this on or we know of it depending on what your what your consciousness level or how how much you're plugged in again i will say that i regulate and i have to dip in and get information here and there just so i can i need to know what's going on like i said those of us that are in messaging and broadcasting and connected and in, in these different ways and and bringing messages to people but no matter how large or small our audiences may be we have a 
a responsibility to not only be tapping in with the with the with the other side, with our divine counterparts to get the information that is needed to help us and assist us on this side, which is why I'm here, aside from helping people with healing. Uh, but it's also important for me to, to plug into reality and what's going on, what's being said and what's being broadcasted in, in the 3D type world through mainstream media and, and, and different people in, in the public eye and celebrities and journalists on all different, you know, fronts and different ways of communicating and, and all this stuff just to get a picture. And I dip in and I dip out and I get very specific information. I'm definitely not somebody who's going to have it, you know, running 24 hours on in any way, shape or form. It's not good for anybody to do that. So please don't do that. Uh, it's kind of hard to get away from it right now. You have to really try so to do that <laughs> if you if you are dipping into it too much and it is only going to get more and more intense because the numbers all across the united states are going to rise uh more and more and uh so prepare yourself prepare yourself for this to last longer than they're they're saying Prepare yourself for a lot of shifts and changes to come and and also know that you're not always going to have to be 100% not commingling with other people. If we really were to stay isolated, like just imagine this, you and all your friends and their family and their kids and all the people that you normally hang out with, is, let's just put yourself in that scenario. Or all the friends that you're social with and you go out with and, and everything like that, you know. Just pretend you were all totally 100% as much as you can be isolated and you didn't and you gave yourself that, you know, let's say you went even overboard. Let's say you're really diligent and you went 15, 20 days your whole family did or all your you and all your roommates or whatever your little pack is that you let's just just put it that way and make it simple you and your pack or just you if you're a single person and uh and you get past the threshold where you're not commingling with other people you're being ultra super careful you're monitoring your health you're you're boosting your immunity as best as you can while you're at home in different ways and, and if everybody did that, after a certain point of time, you could say, okay, it's safe to say that we don't have it. Or the people who cropped up sick, ah, they're sick. Or now we're all isolated because somebody in the family got sick and now we're all potentially exposed. Or, oh, check it out. It's been 20 days and none of us got sick and we've been totally isolated and so has our friends down the street they've been totally isolated they haven't gone anywhere they haven't they haven't uh they haven't and this might be hard to do but as time goes on if you think about getting really strict about things it'll get to a point where you're going to be like okay well i'm i'm checked i'm i'm checked or maybe even you even verified that with a negative test to begin with and then you stayed out of commingling with people that you weren't in your pack with what i'm getting at is there's going to be a point where you can commingle with other people that are on in that same group because you're not going to give it to each other because you don't none of you have the active virus going on but if one of you did then you have a problem so you have to be super, super strict about it. Because I think what really freaks people out is like, I'm not going to be able to see my friends or my family or my my loved ones for months that it like, like really, like our, our kids are not going to be able to see their friends for months at a time. Like that's just really daunting. And no, nobody is used to that. <laughs> and especially kids. And so my message to people would be, think about the long game because <laughs> thinking in terms of 15 days or 30 days or even a month, even 30 days or 60 days at this point is completely asinine you really got to put yourself out and I've been saying this for a while I've been saying June and even that is just like that's getting us to a point where we're gonna I think June is really gonna be the first like 
over the hump of the biggest like first peak, first wave, but we're not going to just have a, a one wave in this country. It's going to it's going to be literally like the like the ocean, just wave after wave after wave. And depending on our decisions from here on out and what we're doing socially with staying away from from other people is really important. And what would be ideal in this situation would be to completely lock down the entire country and then start to systematically um, test and quarantine and uh, and and like those those ships that are coming in that are supposed to take care of non-covid patients the, that needs to be reversed it needs to be covid patients on the ships and and they need to transition into other places for people who don't because they're not going to be able to, they they already know no cruise ships why are you going on cruise ships well now they're sending people that are not sick onto ships like like i'm sorry a military ship isn't that much different than a cruise ship <laughs> a cruise ship how does it make sense to send people that you think are healthy you don't know unless they're gonna be they're doing those they have it and that they can absolutely do one of those five minute tests for corona before they're putting people on those ships and same thing goes and and everybody that works on those ships are not leaving those ships they are gonna have it on those freaking ships as soon as they start using them like like all these makeshift hospitals that they're thinking of oh this is where we're going to send the people who don't have covid no <laughs> that's just it makes no sense because you're just putting people in large groups like it doesn't like a lot of the stuff that's going on it's like this whole idea like oh you get a test and if you're negative then you can go like essentially you're fine you can go you can go out into the world and go to work it's like no you have a negative test so keep yourself safe and keep yourself negative because you can go out and you can get it and be asymptomatic and not know you're giving it to other people it's highly highly contagious i've been saying it's a super it's a super virus. It's a super contagion, and it's not like anything that they're that that they're used to. And so they're they're behind the eight ball this entire time. There's only been a couple of places that are like, we're gonna put this shit on lockdown before we have like mass mass problems because they saw it. If it could happen one place, it can happen everywhere, and we're we're gonna see that. And we've already in the United States have surpassed the other countries with the largest number of cases and deaths, and we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna blow them out of the water they're gonna go oh wow we thought we had it bad but fuck the united states had we have nothing on them and that's it from this point forward we decided to to to, to do it and we're not it's still not hitting home in in a realistic sense as to what is coming and that's frustrating because, as I just said, not too long ago on t on the on the news, and these are this is one of those things where this this what they're showing in the hospital it's not bullshit. It's not made up stories. This is actually what's going on. They're overwhelmed. They're overrun. They don't have what they need. This is everywhere. This has been everywhere. The all over the world. This is absolutely happening, and. Uh, and they're losing people, they're losing themselves. <sighs> and we're truly just getting started. So it's, and I'm not saying all this stuff to, to, in order, you know, to try. I, if you know me, if you follow me, you know that I'm not into creating fear. I'm into hopefully dispelling and helping people get through fear and past fear, but you need to acknowledge reality. Okay. You can't just be like, you can't ignore You can't be like, Oh, I'm not fearful because my head's up my ass and I'm not seeing reality for what it is. It's, it's like, and there's so much focus on the material and the monetary and all that and paying for stuff. It's like, <laughs> What if 
what if nobody had to pay bills from in any way, shape or form, then we wouldn't be stressing about money. Why is this made up bullshit concept of money that they can just pull out of the sky in the trillions of dollars and have it actually, it's not going to cut it. It's not going to work. It would be better if everything was just put on pause. And, and we dealt with taking care of the necessities for people instead of bullshit bills that aren't going to have anything to do with anything that's important or survival or anything if you didn't make that car payment or if, uh, you know, the, The credit cards, it's just, even the mortgage, even the rent. If mortgages aren't due, then rent shouldn't be due. Utilities shouldn't be due. That's what the government should be doing. Paying the utility companies to keep their shit running with what they need to do. Keep the grocery stores, keep the things running so we have a, a working society to a certain point. So we have an infrastructure that we need that obviously we need to keep the lights on we need to keep their food cold we need to keep it coming so en- enough people need to st- i mean we need to stay healthy if we get if things shit gets out of control and things can't be run then we have a real problem and and that's the problem with the with the whole medical thing it's like if they get overrun and they can't keep up then it's going to get to a point where where doctors and nurses are going to start losing their fucking shit and walking out and just being like i can't i can't because the sick people are coming in it's going to be a fucking horror show so we need to protect this system not not the not the economic system of stocks but the system of infrastructure and and medical and keeping people from stressing out and freaking out and doing things that are unsafe for the general population and we need to be aware we need to be cognizant of what's going on in the world we need to be real We need to look at this situation for what it is. We need to respect the virus and know just how relentless and strong it is. So you need to work on being stronger. And uh, and not be... The more stressed and worried you are, the worse it's going to be. That's just, you cannot live in, you know, I, it's like, I, I need to tell you these things, but, but because we don't want to be blindsided. We've already been dealing with that for weeks, just bullshit and getting blindsided, bullshit and getting blindsided. Just a couple days ago, we had a completely different, um, you know, situation coming at to us from from what we were hearing and now it's completely changed it's not that it, it's not that the data has changed it's not that the information has changed it's that they're putting it out to us in a certain way so they're they're like helping with the impact a couple of days ago as well like well if we didn't do anything 2.2 million people could die so let's just say that you know if one or two hundred thousand died it wouldn't be so bad and then two days later they're like hey so guess what probably one or two hundred thousand are gonna die but we told you, that's pretty good. And I don't think any of us can say that's good. It's not good. That's a, those are very, very high numbers. And that's best case scenario. Again, we just need to see it for what it is. And, and I'm more of the school of thought and the way that I'm seeing it at this point is that we need to really look at the long game here and get get that through your consciousness start looking into the rest of the year like if you have children start preparing them to not go back to school in september okay if christmas is really important to spend with family start getting it through your head that you may not be doing that 
we may be finding ourselves right back to 2021 in March, still very much dealing with this and very much going, wow, we've been here a fucking year and look at all that's happened and look at all the dead people and look at how different our society is and how we're running things now and all the things that we had to cut away to be able to do what we're doing now. You know, like I'm just saying, like, I hope that I really don't want to be right and I hope that I'm wrong, but I don't think that I am. And from what I see and what I keep seeing and what keeps coming to me and what keeps happening to reinforce it, to say, yep, that's probably right. And it's like, it's like reality catches up to what I'm saying a week or two out. It's, it's just, and, and at one, at one point when the wave is coming at you and you stand there too long looking at it before you go, oh shit, I should probably get out of the fucking way of this thing. You're, uh, dusted. You're done. You're gone. The wave has taken you over and there's, you know, ass over head and arms and legs are everywhere and you don't know up from down and you can't breathe and nothing ma- makes sense. If you've ever been tousled up in a, in a, in a wave that got to you faster than you could really think what to do or just imagine But that's what's coming at us. Some of us can see it. Some of us can see it to an extent that is is more than than we're being told. And then some of us can really, really see it. And I can really, really see it. I really see it. And I just want you guys to, again, start wrapping your head around this. Start realizing that that this is a highly contagious super, super virus. It, it goes after if you have a, if something's going on within your energy system and, and you're, be, you're below a certain level with your life force energy, you're not strong enough to, to fight this, period. And that can happen to anyone of any age and it doesn't matter what you look like. So the most fit of looking people with a good diet and everything, but if they've got some life force energy stuff going on with them that is more negatively charged than positively charged, and I think that people can understand, like you can look at a yoga instructor, but they can be utterly toxic and narcissistic and really have a bad diet and be an alcoholic, but they're teaching yoga every day. There are those people. I'm just putting that as an example. I'm not like calling out yoga instructors, but I'm just saying appearances don't mean shit. Okay. So we have to understand that, that, that it's about energy. This particular virus runs on the energetic system. It breaks it down slowly, 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 slowly. So once you're actually like fucking, like you're sick, your body is so worn out, has no more energy because it already started behind the eight ball that you can't handle it. And, and there's, Like I said, there could be different reasons for that going on for everybody energetically. I mean, but this is my wheelhouse. This is what I deal with, with diagnosing with people and figuring out, okay, where's your, what's your problem? Why do you have an ailment or an issue or a disease or a chronic pain? Where is your life force energy being siphoned off of? What is the root of that? And let's extrapolate that, untangle it, transmute it, get it out of there, put in the energy that's actually high vibe, heal what's been what's been broken down in the meantime, and lift up and pump up your life force energy. Makes sense, right? So this is the way that people need to be thinking. And when they say there's no there's no way to fix this, there's no cure, there's no magic this, there's no, it's like, well, that's actually inaccurate, but you know, to the best of their knowledge, they're saying the truth, but it's not actually true. Uh, because if I had my go at a person who who had who had it, they would feel a lot better after I got done with them. <laughs> And trust me, I'm just chomping at the bit 
just chomping at the bit. Not that I want anybody to be sick. I don't want to, if I could, if I could do magic, if I could truly do and help everybody and to just make it magically, I'll go away all over the world. Trust me, I would. This is be, it's beyond that. And this is a case by case basis that, I, I mean, I'm only one person and, and a person actually has to be cognizant and intentional about their own healing and especially when it comes to this. So I can't just go willy-nilly. I can just send out love light energy and more and more power to to everyone that they get in alignment with things and and awaken more to their to themselves, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And I guess with all of that said, 30 minutes and 40 seconds in <laughs> <laughs> at 10.55, we're finally going to get to the cards for fire, you guys. I guess I just had to get all of that out. So here we are, 10.56 now. Yeah, 10.56 now. Let's see what these three Archangel Oracle cards are about for fire. Our fire are Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. So here we go. First card. Teaching and learning with Archangel Zadkiel. Keep an open mind and learn new ideas. Then teach these ideas to others. Next, prioritize with Archangel Metatron. Focus on your highest priorities. I will help you get organized and motivated. And next, all is well. This is perfect right now. All is well with Jeremy L. Everything is happening exactly as it's supposed to with hidden blessings you will soon understand. Okay, let's see. So now is definitely a time, especially for, for fire signs, to use this this time to go down some rabbit holes rabbit holes possibly that that you've been avoiding because you didn't have the time to get into it you're a little apprehensive uh and this can mean different things for different people as far as as far as when i say rabbit holes the stu the spiritual study of what makes you tick and for different people it's different things when it comes to spirituality and connecting with your soul and and your guides so you just have to go with whatever it is for you it could be a few things uh, and it could be it could be creative in its in its appearance straight off I mean my art I feel is very spiritual uh, but it's also it's artistic and so that could be part of it. it could be it could be music it could be art it could be it could be movement and that sort of thing and and we're just gonna have to like we're talking about you know we're gonna it's gonna be a while before thing before people are coming together in groups because it's just not safe unfortunately unless you've really done like what I said and really kept yourself away and and there's a definite we could we can really say that we're safe and then start to commingle. I kind of see kind of like a rotating type of thing within regions of letting people out at one point or another in the future, how it's going to work before things, you know, it's kind of like, all right, safe for everybody to be out at the same time. But nevertheless, uh, we need to be open to thinking outside the box and approaching life in different ways. And the fire signs are uniquely uh, designed to handle change and and be in constant movement with that with that fire energy. But really needing to 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 and liking they like to figure out new things and be creative and and get into different different things. And so this is a really good time for that because. It's time to innovate a new way of, of doing and being and connecting and and doing the things that we used to do, but in a different way. So, and then also like the spiritual aspects and getting into things and learning about different things spiritually. So there's that. Metatron's coming in to say, I will help you with this. We'll help you with your, with focusing your priorities. 
Uh, at this point, try not to worry about the materialistic things when it comes to life. The most important things that we're, that we're dealing with are, are food and, and keeping food on the table, being, keep being healthy. If you have food, if you're, if you have money for food and you have shelter, those two things are, you know, check the boxes and, and know that worrying about the other stuff is not going to help. So focus on what you can manage and handle and start and start putting in practice a certain type of maybe schedule. But first things first, we should work on figuring out what it is, at least for now, you want to be spending time on. So it could be working out. It could be it could definitely be starting to do creative projects. Uh, and you can do this with other people. This could be stuff that you've been thinking about doing with other people that you just haven't done yet. Could be the perfect time for that. There's a lot of different things that, that could be, that you could use be using this time for. And then all is well, everything is ex happening exactly as it's supposed to with hidden blessings you will soon understand. So. The more that you're not in resistance, the better, the more that you're just in a, in a nice flow with yourself about this stuff, uh, the easier it will be. And you'll be able to hear messages, feel, you know, be guided. Uh, and it's going to be different than it, than it was, than it has been in the past. Everything is different. So we just have to have to get on board with understanding that and and knowing that everything is happening for a reason and we have to try to get out of our own way and don't project about what if this happened on top of that like I was hearing somebody today going well what if there was you know not only the pandemic but then you know catastrophes of like you know, talking about other natural disaster stuff on top of it. And it's like, why, why are you doing that? <laughs> we're right now, we're all, it's, it, are we hearing about any crazy weather anywhere as we're dealing with this? No. Are we hearing of any crazy shit going on in space as we're dealing with this? No. We're just dealing with this. So why project and, and bother the system and get your mind worried about things that don't exist. People going, oh, well, in three months, then what's going to happen about my rent? Don't fucking worry about it. That's three months away from right now. Why is it going to do any good for you to worry about it? In most places, there's a pause, a moratorium on, on evictions, on any of that stuff. As time goes on things are going to adjust themselves out and we we just have to let it unfold and know that it will and the more that we're in resistance to as things are unfolding and how things are happening as things are shifting and changing and and we're not saying okay well what what other things can i do what else is out there what what is and we all have, and I can sit here and think of all these different scenarios. So unless, so I can't be too specific or else I would sit here for forever. I think different things are coming to me about different scenarios, but I can't get into all of them. If you're guided and you want specific help with me, you know how to find me. But the bottom line is there's always a solution and fear and worry and strife and, and, all of, all of the things that keep you up at night, keep you worried, keep you in fear, keep you angry, keep you, any of these things are blocking the positive energies, the ideas, the motivations, the passion, the creativity that could be coming to you to help you out. Because when you're saying, please, 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 God help me and give me a way to figure this out, blah, 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 blah. But then you don't shut the fuck up about it. And start thinking positively and then open up the door for the for the information to come and for the for the for it to manifest you just keep on doing that energy it's never you're never gonna let it come in so you have to decide 
I have faith it will be okay. I will have enough food to feed myself and my family. I will not, I will not allow myself to be in fear of all of this. If I happen to get sick, I will be okay. I will be stronger for having been sick and getting past it. I'm not going to decide, oh, I'm sick, I'm going to die. If you make those decisions, you have lost already. Please do not make those decisions. Oh, I'm one of those people. If I get, I'm going to die. Oh, good Lord. Stop it. (laughs) You cannot. Please, you cannot be like that because it is absolutely not going to work out. I mean, you're going to get what you're saying, basically, is what I'm saying, because you're already made, you're making those decisions. So you have to make different decisions. Every, every, uh, ask every perspective that you have in any given situation is your choice. It's your choice to be in fear. It's your choice to be in faith it's your choice to be in love it's your choice to be in anger it's your choice to be um in flow creativity in in a creative flow it's your choice to sit and play video games or it's your choice to sit and meditate (laughs) i mean these are all your choices as we've talked about it before there couldn't be a better time than to go go within because you can't go out if you you can go outside but not in the ways and the places that, that you're used to. But so still make sure you go outside and you're getting and you are doing that because nature is really good. You just don't want to be commingling. Even if it means just sitting outside, just sitting there for a little bit in the sun. Like we just need to slow this shit down. Just slow our roll. Just understand like we're all, we're, it's. As humans, we're, we're stubborn and it takes always, re- we, we need to be forced into situations to make changes. And that's what's happening right now. And we're all having and should be doing that. And when I hear about people going, I'm so bored, it's like, well, then you're stuck in your ways and you need to readjust. And it's okay to be, it's, it's okay to understand that and to acknowledge that. But, but then, you know, if you choose to remain there, that's on you. So to go, it's okay to find yourself there and go, okay, well, the usual shit that entertains me, I'm over it. (laughs) And now I'm bored and now I'm lonely and now I'm sad and I'm scared and now I'm this and now I'm that. And you start, you know, that, that morale thing starts, what does that do? That's siphoning off of your life force energy. Stop it. There's so much. If you have the internet, if you have books, if you have your imagination, if you have a piece of paper, if you have a crayon, do something like that, like those things. Uh, Get into researching stuff, you know, all of these things. All right, moving on. We're going to get into the Angels of Abundance because... Why not? Angels of Abundance coming in to give us messages for the fire signs for the month of April. Things to think about when it comes to abundance. And this can mean woesies. This can mean anything with abundance. <laughs> woesies. A couple of cards falling here. And I'm told to get one more. So I guess we're getting three for each because two just <laughs> two just came out. Here we go. We have successful funding. Your idea is divinely guided and supported by the same infinite wisdom of God that gave you the idea. Do not allow money concerns to prevent you from turning it into reality. Crowdfunding partnerships and other investments are available to help you. Exactly. Exactly what I was saying. You have it in your power to decide, okay, I used to do this. Now I got to figure out something else because my reality has shifted. So I got to shift with it. And, and, and whatever ideas are coming to you as they are, really think on them, meditate on them. Think of how you can collaborate and how we can be solving more than one, one person's or one household's or one, you know, whatever families problems at once or you know there's different ways to to make 
this new this new life work the next card is savings as you consistently save for your future your future is saved you do your future self a big favor as you consistently set aside present funds this is part of your self-care and path to feeling secure as you focus upon your life purpose well this isn't the first time we've seen this card in the last few months and definitely it was good advice for a lot of us you know to put some money away or not spend money on things that we didn't really need so we would have more right now uh and so hopefully that hopefully you have a little bit of a savings and and now you're being frugal about it uh, and, and as time goes on, I think that people are going to be seeing that differently. So, so for right now, money, it seems this is, this is about also, I'm hearing, this is also about knowing that or thinking in terms of like, there's always going to be enough in the bank to take care of what you, what you really need. Maybe not all the things you want right now, but what you really need and enough and to be comfortable and just start thinking in terms of that, not thinking in terms of being in the red and not having enough. Just start thinking in the terms of things are going to shift and change. I'm not going to run out of money. I'm going to have enough. Things are going to come in. There's going to be, there's going to be so much more people taking care of people because in this, in this world, and I've said it before, we have people who have way, 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 way more money than they need. And there's people who have way less money than they need. And it's been out, out of balance all over the world for forever since money was a concept. And, and in this time, people are going to go, well, let's see. Do I really need X amount of millions or billions of dollars in the bank when I see my fellow man, woman, and child unable to, you know, because they can't work and they're the normal people, maybe I don't need all this money, you know? Like, maybe I got enough for a while. Maybe I can write on this for a while and I should share more. And if, you know, even 10% of the richest people in the world took out a good chunk of their money and started distributing it out, we wouldn't be, it wouldn't be so bad. So maybe we need to think about that too. Think about people going into their savings, the ones who have a fuck ton of money and for them to be inspired by, by their guides to stop hoarding their money and to stop having more than they need and to start giving it to people who really need it, to help with supplies and places, to help with funding, to help with people buying food and to help with with taking care of people who need to be taken care of and to help with the medical uh, uh, industry so it doesn't collapse. If our medical, if the hospital starts collapsing, our society will collapse because they, it, it, let's just not go there. We all can kind of, I hopefully see, see that. So we need, we need, we need to think in terms of this, not only for ourselves, but for the collective, the people that are in power, the people that have a lot of money, and we need to start maybe really putting it out there like, hey, how about, you know, we start doing something uh, in, in terms of help, helping each other in different ways than we ever have before. And we have to start thinking like that because we have never been in this situation in this world before. So we need to start thinking about living in a different way in this world than we ever did before. Things that used to be a no-brainer and you can do and you can live this way and act this way and do your day-to-day -day this way are not going to be the way that, the, that we're going to be doing it for a while. And we're going to have to, 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 to pivot and to change and to think outside the box. And we have to start putting things out there to the collective to, to make it start happening so think about it meditate on it you're gonna have enough in the bank and the people that have an abundance are gonna share we're gonna take care of each other people are gonna start waking up more spiritually and go oh maybe this is why i'm in the position that i'm in now 
Maybe it's not about selling movies or records or TV shows or, or filling up arenas so people can hear me. And, and maybe it's not about, you know, just winning an election. Maybe it's about this. Maybe taking millions and millions and millions of dollars I would normally put into this and put into that instead and, you know, whatever. Maybe, maybe instead of deciding to buy that fill-in-the-blank bazillion dollar thing that I was going to do, maybe I'm going to do this instead. So we just have to put that out there into the collective. There are people that can help the rest of the people. There are people that can come in. They have the power. They have the means. They have the funding. They have, they have the connections to make this world work in a way that is fair and good and decent for the rest of us. And they have a responsibility to do that, I think. They, they've lived a very cushy, privileged uh, life with beautiful things and they've had beautiful vacations and they they buy ridiculous things for ridiculous amounts of money and and now you know it's like playtime is over let's get to the real stuff let's think about what really is important in our in our world right now because it's not like this is just a problem for the poor people everybody is affected by this everybody so everybody needs to change the way they think okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> oh, God. next card bountiful nature spending time in nature helps shift you to a higher vibration and reminds you of god's infinite abundance Go outside and enjoy a walk or hike with your pet, meditate beneath the tree, garden, sit under the stars, or do some other activity to connect with the limitless vastness. And if there's any time to enjoy space and nature, it is now. And because there shouldn't be, and there will be less and less people out, and to be able to, like I said before, so I'm not going to repeat a whole lot about this. We going out in nature and connecting with nature is extraordinarily healing and centering and connecting with, with mother earth and, and being in that space with her is so very healing and clearing. And, and she wants the best for us. She's taking us through this time together uh, and so going into nature is going to really help regulate and, and uh, make you feel better. Keep your immune system up. Meditating outside, getting, getting sun, going for a walk or a hike, whatever you can do, whatever feels really good to you, whatever you feel safe doing and, and, uh, and is, you know, works with you and change it up. It can always be different. Take your kids out. Like, like you don't want to not be in in the fresh air and the outdoors. There's one thing. There's a stay-at-home order for a reason, but there's also like, and you have to be smart about stuff. But you also can't forego being outside and getting into nature because that will start to erode on your immune system, especially when you're used to being out all the time. So that's a huge shift in energy and you can't just be like, okay, we're just inside. No going outside at all. You can't have, like, please don't do that. <laughs> okay. And have more nature inside plants, flowers. It's springtime. So it's a great time. You can order these, uh, to your home or, you know, if you're going out anyway, pick some up, bringing in flowers and, and, uh, crystals, flowers, uh, what else? Um, essential oils and just anything, anything of nature, bring it in. I've been super into Himalayan rock salt and that is really great for dispelling and moving and flowing of energy and getting rid of negative energy. So the more that you can have in your environment of Himalayan rock salt, whether it's lamps or just the pieces I've bought, I shit you not, you guys, 30 pounds of big pieces of Himalayan rock salt in the last like two months because I've been guided to it and it feels amazing and it's beautiful and I've made these like candle things out of them and so the more of that you can have in your environment that'll keep 
cycling through and flowing through the energy, that's really good for you too. Okay, and we're going to do some cards with the Hermetic Tarot. So I'm going to do some... And I will say right now that when I started getting ready for this and I moved cards around, the hang the hanged man came up. So that is a card I'm going to be getting into. Uh, oh, I'm not sure if I cut myself off before or not, but I had worked on the devil card and had gone through the whole thing. Oh, here's a card. What is this? The Hierophant. That's our card. The hero font, Magnus of the Eternal Gods. Card number five, the hero font. Anyway, I'd gone through the whole thing and it didn't record. It didn't record on both of my devices. I can't remember now if I, told, if I said this earlier. So if I'm repeating myself, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to get back to that. But I just didn't have it in me to repeat my work that I, and everything. It was like, almost an hour and a half or an hour and 45 minutes when I realized that it wasn't recording and I recorded it on my phone and on the computer and in neither place did it save. So that was interesting. I've had a lot of that going on. It's been, it's been really interesting around here energetically. Uh, it's just, there's so much in flux. It's just so trippy. Uh, okay, so the hero font just came out, Magnus of the Eternal Gods. So I'm going to actually use the the book that it came with. I'm being guided to do that, and then we're going to get into uh, it somewhere else. But let's start here first. So it's card number five, the hero font. I'm just having the hardest time finding it. Um, in this tiny little book. Wait, here it is. Okay, I found it. And I need more light all of a sudden. Okay. Magnus of the Eternal Gods. Na uh, Vau is the, the letter and it means nail. The seated figure where, where is a papal tiara the elephant is of the nature of taurus and symbolizes the strength of the hero font's foundation the star-shaped figure at the top of the card is the monogram of hermetic truth and also represents the seal of the macrocosm the diagram is actually two triangles formed into a six-pointed star the seal of Solomon and the star of David. The pentagram to the right is the seal of the microcosm. The microcosm is a reflection of the macrocosm. The microcosm is man and his will. He is a reflection of the universe, which is the macrocosm. The hero font holds in his hand the philosophic triple crossed wand, which represents the particular knowledge essential to all magical work that you that unites the microcosm and the macrocosm. Each ring of the triple cross is also an indicator of the three acons of Isis, Osiris, and Horus. With his right hand, the hero font gives the sign of occult wisdom. The symbol at the foot of the card is a horned sigil of Taurus. Meanings, divine, divine wisdom, manifestation, ritualism, teaching, explanation, kindness, timidity. Reversed, foolish, foolish exercise, overkindness, unorthodox, frail, and vulnerable. Wow, well, that definitely... Uh, makes sense for what we got going on here. And the symbolism about the microcosm and the macrocosm is really telling with what's going on here with, with our world and the reflection outside, the reflection inside and how that, how that affects us. Couldn't be more on display with what's going on these days between the, you know, the, the micro and the macro. 
So that is definitely something to think about. And we are a reflection of, of the bigger and the greater for sure. Uh, let's see what else I see here with this. Uh, also, I'm hearing like a balancing, balancing of of the energies and the elements. It's it's again one of those times to sit down and start thinking about about your own body and structure, physical structure, and the balance between what is earthly and what is spirit, uh, what is energy and what is physical is something that that we all should be meditating on and and again divine wisdom manifestation teaching so teaching coming up here a couple of times with teaching and learning with zadkiel keep an open mind and learn new ideas then teach these new ideas to others so with the fire signs of aries leo and sagittarius within the month of of april April being the month uh, with Aries and Taurus, Taurus being the an Earth sign, so that's next on our on our list here. But Taurus coming through in this in this fire sign reading because of where we're at right now, and and those earthly types of influences coming in to. to uh, I'm I'm hearing be a grounding for the fire the grounding energy for the fire uh, the fire people at this time so this is great so what okay so specifically what what they're showing me is we've got this like the fire come like like imagine like our our chest and our heads on fire but it's just being suspended there and it, it doesn't have any real like grounded or rootedness in it and that's kind of where we've been for these last few weeks like there's this fire going on about what's happening we're having all these shifts and changes and ideas and and for people in the fire sign we tend to be like we tend to be able we're mutable so we tend to be able when I say we I'm a fire sign I'm a Sagittarius in my sun sign so so we tend to be able to go with the flow a little bit better than the more uh the fixed signs so so that's kind of how how that works um okay so let's see what else i'm getting here about the Or actually, I was calling the fire sign a, a, a mutable sign. It's a cardinal sign. Uh, but compared to the earth sign, which is a fixed sign. So the whole idea here is, sorry, I got distracted there. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm calling it the wrong thing. But the way that I'm seeing it is like with the fire signs that the able to the changing of ideas but if we're not grounded if we don't feel like we have a stability that fire can kind of rage in ways that we don't want it to so for the fire signs it's in april it's about it's about feeling more into having a a foundation a grounding energy that's coming in with the Taurus energy, with this energy with the hero font where the fire is going to be like, okay, I want more balance. So I'm going to get more balance within my body, but I'm really going to start focusing on things more on the spiritual side and things more creatively and things more, and really just if you decide that, like I said, everything is a choice. So if you decide that your, your circumstances right now are going to benefit you and don't stress on the things that, that you cannot control and start working on the things that you can, it's going to make it a lot better. And it's just going to naturally feed your life force battery. And, and especially if I'm seeing for people who have been working in ways and living lives and, and, and making ends meet in ways that are unhappy and 
and and you wanted a way out and all that. I'm not saying like, hey, you got your wish, but but you kind of did. And this is the time to start thinking of 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 maybe not fighting so much to get things back to the way they were because maybe they didn't feel so good. And now you have time to kind of stir the pot a little bit on the inside and see what where you land on things and and what else is feeling good for you okay we're gonna move on people it is 11 30 on the 31st and got some awesome cards here and I'm just gonna take a picture of them before we move on so bear with me and we will be right back Okie dokie. So I got our pictures for these, these cards. We're going to get them back in our stacks and then we're going to move on to our earth signs. Same system here. Archangels, angels of abundance. So we're going to clear these out. We're going to get started with the earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn for April 2020. Information that's going to help the collective of earth signs for this next period in time. Again, we're going into, I didn't talk about it much, we're going into our next Stargate on the 4th. It should be really interesting. Not really spending a whole lot of time talking about that right now because this is an overall for the entire month and just energies to think about and messages to focus on for the entire month. Stargate business we're going to do separately. We have a couple days for that. So we're just going to focus on this general reading for the entire collective for the entire month, breaking them down into the different elements. Okay, nice and cleared. Getting, uh, that one wants to come out, that one wants to come out. Okay, first two cards, what do we get here? Divine Order with Archangel Raguel. Everything is how it needs to be right now. Look past the illusion and see underlying order. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Next, Courage. With Archangel Ariel, be courageous and stand up for your beliefs. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to do one more card. Oh, there it is. Claire Cognizance with Archangel Uriel. Pay attention to thoughts and ideas that come to you as they are answered prayers. What was I saying earlier? You can't just be in this, you know, state of worry and panic or else you're not going to be able to hear the, hear thoughts and ideas that come to you or see things for what they are so you can use them to your advantage as you manifest your, your desires um, and opportunities. And here we are, very similar message to what we got earlier with, uh, what was it? All is well or whatever. <laughs> now I can't even remember all of a sudden. Um, similar message, divine order. Everything is how it needs to be right now. Look past the illusion and see underlying order. This is bigger than, than what we can see from this perspective. We have to raise our consciousness, raise our awareness, raise our perspective, satellite out, Take yourself from the, the perspective of on the ground to getting into a helicopter and going straight up and looking down on the situation. Different perspective, higher perspective. There's balance that is being worked out now. Balance within the collective, balance within, within, within and, and, and without. Courage, of course. We need courage. We need to stay out of fear. Be courageous and stand up for your beliefs. 
So whatever that it, that's going to be going on in the coming days, weeks, and months that that is going to require fortitude and courage. And, and what this means is when it's stand up for, for, for your beliefs, we're going to have to be... Uh, earth signs are, are, are definitely... going to be gosh what what is this it's like it's this it's this very i'm feeling this is very like almost like like this like i'm just seeing trees for some reason like really strong trees that is like even like when the winds and the storm is coming, like the strong tree is just going to stand there and know that no matter what may fly, that the roots are going to hold and it's going to stay. And I just, that's kind of what I see here with this earth, with this earth reading, with this, with this, with Ariel, with courage, just this, uh, this fortitude, this strength, to not be afraid of what may come, but to know you're going to rise to the occasion, know that you're going to be a pillar of strength for other people, uh, that you're going to be able to connect in different ways. And you're going to, it's about it, intuition and innovation I'm hearing. And this has a lot to do with the clear cognizance aspect. Pay attention to thoughts and ideas that come to you. They are answered prayers. So that is definitely a thing. Uh, we have so many divine beings that are at our disposal to help us and are constantly trying to do that. <laughs> They're there for us. So just tapping in, paying attention, being open to being guided, not deciding how things are, not projecting too much. Uh, we, we can't, there's sometimes we can't help that, but if it's projecting out of fear, that's a different thing. If it's making up scenarios that make the situation worse than it really is, then that's, that's, that's negative projecting. So we need to stop doing that. Okay, our first card for the abundance, angels of abundance, is the main card out of this deck. It's called abundance mindset. If you think of your abundance as something that happens in the future, then it will always be one day away from you. See, feel, think, and speak of abundance as something you already have in the present moment, and that is what you will experience. So I have everything I need. I always have everything I need. I'm never in lack. I always know I'll be taken care of. I'm not going to be without. I'm not going to, to go hungry. I'm always going, it's always going to, to appear. It always is. I already have it. Like you just have to get into the mindset of thinking this way, not as opposed to, I'm not going to have enough. Where is it going to come from? I don't know how I'm going to do this. And there's just a completely different framework and in, in thinking there and energy there. One is panicked and fearful and, and um, out of control. The other one is, is very much in control and, and feels really good and, and ha carries a certain sense of, 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 authority. I know I'm going to have everything I need. I know I'm going to be taken care of. I know I'm going to be guided in the right way, regardless of it, how it may feel or look sometimes. We need to sometimes go through messy things to clean things up. Sometimes that's just the way that it works. And regardless, I know, and you have to just you have to have that, that mindset, that abundance mindset. Okay, next card coming out of the abundance oracle, deservingness. 
you are a beloved child of God like everyone else and you deserve to receive the support that will allow you to focus upon your divine life purpose. Even if you can't yet recognize your lovable qualities, trust that God and the angels uh, and the angels can see how amazing you truly are. So what I'm hearing about this, there's like people that may be thinking like, oh, um, we're being punished. This is like a punishment kind of thing. Uh, so there's some of that. And this, we're definitely not being punished. We're all loved. We all deserve to receive support. And if we focus on that and what we are supposed to be doing with our lives and our life purpose, we will be able to understand and recognize how it starts to unfold. But we have to allow for that. We have to decide that that maybe the, the constructed ideas of what we decided our lives were and always would be was an illusion, was temporary, wasn't always what it was meant to be, that we weren't always as connected to our authenticity and what we're meant to be and who we really are. Maybe we have stifled our own voices and our own uh, beingness to satisfy other people and we we've, we've kept ourselves from ourselves for a very long time and now as we talked about the microcosm and the macrocosm divine information and knowledge and all that coming in with the fire signs uh, we need to to understand that there's a lot at there's there's a lot at play and to get us to a new place in time, to, sh to shift us, to help us shift. So if we have any reservations about, about this stuff, we have to recognize how, how, that we are deserving, that, that there isn't something there about judgment or, or not being deserving or not being loved or any of that stuff. Okay, next card. Words of abundance. You have the ability to instantly manifest abundance by choosing powerfully positive words. Always describe your own and the world's economic situation in loving and optimistic terms. And that is what you attract for yourself and others. So we were talking about that earlier when it came to thinking about oh, the savings card and thinking about how what the status is for the world and what we want to see and the changes in the world when it comes to all that stuff so this is very similar to that that was talking about savings this is talking about just how we have the ability to manifest so we need to make sure that we're manifesting in, po in a positive charge instead of a negative charge so if, again if you're talking about your lack you're going to manifest more more situations to perpetuate lack if you talk about and think about and have faith in abundance and and the, and tapping in with the abundance matrix and bringing in that energy in a real positive way, then you will. And you need to be, and also not be so pinpointed in how things are going to work out. Sometimes we close doors that we don't even know we're closing because we're just waiting for something to come through the window. And it's like, maybe it's not meant to come through the window, but you're so focused on it coming through the window that you haven't opened up all the doors or all the other possible windows that it can come from because you're so stubborn in how it needs to be. And and those are the type that's the type of energy that tends tends to have you repeating things. And at this time we need to see things in a different way and people are going to be seeing things in a different way coming up for sure. And how we work as far as uh, making money, what we're doing with our lives, partnerships and collaborations and, and all that sort of stuff and just doing things in a really different way than we ever could have imagined. I bet if you asked like any of the late night, uh, the late night TV host guys that they're going to be doing their shows from home, uh, if they said, do you ever think you're going to be doing your show from home in the, any time in the near future, they would have laughed in your face. And they're all doing their shows from home. They're, they've adapted to be able to like, well, I'm not 
not doing what I normally do. I'm just doing it in a different way. And it's rudimentary and it's, and it, and it's, and it's so funny to see these amazing polished performers go from these multi-million dollar sets and cameras and lights and all these people that are part of their production to just like literally maybe them and their kids or just them and a tripod and and they're doing what they normally do but they've adapted and they're doing it in a different way so uh that goes to show you the will of a creator and and uh and and what you're how you how we can adapt to to do you know do what you need to do or to change or to go okay maybe I'm not you know maybe I don't want to put all that energy into that I'm going to do something else and maybe I didn't I was putting too much energy into something I never really was super passionate about I'm going to figure out what I'm I'm going to start focusing on what I'm super passionate about and maybe or or I am doing what I'm super passionate about but I can't do it the way I used to do it anymore so now I'm going to do it differently because I have to you know but be in that whole mindset of abundance okay guys we're going to get into the tarot the hermetic tarot and I clear this out a little bit here so great cards, divine order, courage, clear cognizance. So that's working on our psychic abilities, meditating, I'm hearing. We want to meditate. Again, I'm always talking about this. If not now, then when? <laughs> if not now, then when, you guys? Why not? Why not? I think we're just all really needing to get our footing, get get things kind of figured out and acclimated in this new this new time, and we all have a role to play with this. Okay. Let's see what car we get for Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Cards just flippity flipped. Got three cards here. I'm here to take the middle card. So we're only taking one card. The Hermit. The Hermit. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> the Hermit. Magnus of the Voice of Light. The Hermit. Card number nine. Card number nine. The Hermit, Magnus of the Voice of Light, Yod means hand. The magical lamp appears above a solitary figure wrapped in a hood and mantle. The lamp burns without wick or fuel. It is lit only by the lex of the universal fluidic ag agent. Even without fuel, the beams radiate in all directions. The face that burns in the golden triangle is a symbol of the functity of the infinite and the eternal. At the bottom of the card are the, cos are the cosmic egg and a shaft of wheat, dormant for years but easy to nurture to life at the opportune time. To the back of the hermit is a large plant yielding a seed at its summit. The snake coiled and passive around the symbols of Virgo and Mercury, Virgo, Virgo's ruling planet, is also ready to spring to life. Meanings, wisdom sought, knowledge, divine inspiration, counsel, inner strength. Reversed, imprudence, hastiness, rashness prematurity so like teaching came up twice with our first reading here we have strength coming through so we have we have strength we have courage with Ariel we're talking about strength and strength coming through here again meaning balance eternal justice strength and fairness uh, we're talking about this this strength with with this going on eternal justice the balance the balancing is happening I'm hearing the balancing is happening I 
and so yeah it's about balancing equilibrium being in there okay so this half dark half light thing so the inside the outside the darkness the the love the fear like all of these things to balance out and to get into order is is what we're looking at here with the hermit also just very obvious here with the hermit just being in um being in that stage of going within again uh, and like the Uh, the hero font we talked to very it was divine wisdom teaching explanation kindness and with here with the hermit wisdom sought knowledge divine inspiration so very very similar in in those energies And it feels like, yeah, one is, is like, is like working with the fire of it. And the other one is working with the grounding of the fire with it. I just keep seeing that. So, so of course we're all connected and these elements do work together. We work together as a collective and, and these energies come through. So, so it's just something to think about. Okay. So. Let's see. Is there anything else with this, with the hermit? Hmm. Sorry for all the yawns, you guys. Almost midnight here in the Pacific. It's been kind of a long day, and I didn't sleep that much last night. Okay, so I'm going to take some pictures here real quick. And... I'm going to do this. I'm not even going to pause it this time. I can do this really fast. And sometimes when I pause the... Um, the recordings, it stops it, and then I have to deal with editing them together. And if I don't have to do editing, the better, because my equipment is slow and yada, yada, yada. And it's just better to just let it free flow. And taking pictures for this, and again, these pictures are going to be, I'm going to put them on my Instagram, and I think I'm going to make... I know I've said it before, probably nobody's even checked, so it doesn't matter, but <laughs> we're going to start off April with putting these, any readings that I do for the collective in my blog as well, and also creating a forum for them too, if you guys want to come in and discuss, it's good to have people to talk to these days more than ever, so please, you guys, uh, if you're interested in any of that and you're not yet signed up for my my website as being a subscriber and getting updates on stuff, please go to my website, thehealingbutterfly.org and sign up for, for updates. And then that way you'll know when I post a blog post, you'll know when there's a forum update, you'll know uh, when there's a new podcast. So, well... If you're subscribed, you know that anyway, but you'll know that it's on the, on the website. Okay. Let's get these cards back and then we're going to move on to our air signs, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Okay. All right, we're going to get into these cards for our air signs for April 2020, starting with the Archangel Oracle. And 
and I did start this off thinking we're just going to do one card each and it turns out to be three and three and then one. So of course it's taking much longer than I anticipated. But we're getting good information. I hope you agree. Okay, guys, two first cards out. We have moon cycles with Haniel. Notice how the moon affects your energy and manifestation and capitalize upon these cycles. And then second card, <coughs> excuse me, second card is overcoming difficulties. Archangel Jeremiel, the worst is now behind you and you are surmounting any previous challenges. <laughs> That's great, great energy, great news. Let's see what our next card is. Here we go. Counselor. Whoopsie. Counselor. Moon cycles, overcoming difficulties, and now counselor with Azriel. You are a natural, natural counselor, and many people benefit from your guidance and reassurance. Okay, so let's start here. Moon cycles. Uh, this is, okay, so moon cycles, the first thing I heard was, like, I thought about was space and air, focusing on how, in the, okay, so what I'm hearing is in the coming months, paying attention to the moon cycles are going to be ultra important to help regulate energy, especially as, as much it's going to be shifting and changing as much, uh, transitioning that's going to be taking place within the collective, whether it's about transitioning from into, into death in the collective or transitioning to different jobs and just all sorts of stuff. There's just all this transitional stuff and, tapping in with the energies and paying attention to the cycles not only the moon i'm hearing with the stargates and all the different cycles that we have uh, is going to help your connection spiritually and keep you healthy uh, i'm also feeling connections with birds um <laughs> whether it's watching birds liking to hear birds sing being around birds something this is bird a lot of bird energy going on here and i can vouch for the fact that having a bird around is really cool or observing birds is really awesome i'm definitely a bird person uh anything with wings <laughs> i'm really into so that's coming in really strong here with Jeremy L, uh, overcoming difficulties, the worst is now behind you and you are surmounting any previous challenges. And I'm being told to dive a little deeper with this card into the book that it this comes with. I don't usually, I don't always get into the book when it comes to the Archangel Oracle, but sometimes, oh, I opened up directly to Moon Cycles. So we'll go ahead and read that first. The full moon is a perfect time to release anything you're done with. The new moon is the time to focus on manifesting desires and intentions. And the evening before the full moon is an optimal time for healing and for recharging healing instruments such as crystals and oils. Spend time looking at the moon and notice how you feel in relationship to its cycles and you as you discover the moon's connection with your vitality and moods. Excuse me. Sorry, guys. You'll be more in touch with its divine magic. Okay. And working with Haniel. Haniel's aura is bluish white, like a full moon glow. The crystal associated with Haniel is a moonstone, which has magical nurturing energy associated with it. Wear or hold a moonstone whenever you wish to feel close to Haniel. She will care for you with her nurturing mother energy and affect miracles with her love for you. So you just 
when we talked about earlier about just knowing and, and knowing how things are going to be good and okay and having that faith, that's kind of what I'm hearing here. Okay, and then what I was going to get into? Oh, yeah, counselor. Oh, no, overcoming difficulties. Sorry, overcoming difficulties. <laughs> L-M-N-O. <laughs> I'm finding it. There we go. The challenges you've faced have made you stronger and have taught you new lessons. Instead of becoming bitter, you've opened your heart with compassion towards people in similar situations. You've let go of any blame or feelings of victimhood. And this is why you're now overcoming your previous challenges. Your positive outlook is attracting a loving solution and new situations at a higher level of spiritual understanding. Stay positive. Well, that's really great advice for everybody right now. This is really the mindset to have that we we're facing challenges and we're stronger for them. We know that we're going to be we're going to be stronger for the challenges that we get through. I even got that information. Well, it didn't get recorded, but I got this information about those those people who go through um, getting COVID-19 and and recover from it, which is more people than die from it. We always have to keep that perspective, but those people are going to have a level of of immunity and energy that they wouldn't have had they're going to they're going to deal with or they're going to have within their energetic body something that to have, they're going to have gone through something i guess is what i'm saying here and uh and when you do that, your your system does get stronger for it once you've once you've recovered. It's always it's always like that. It's always once you're recovered and, and everything you I mean, it, it can take time depending on how, how intense it was and 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 all that, especially with this because it really does work work quickly and can be pretty intense. But on a whole, we have to think about the majority of people don't get deathly sick and they do recover and we have to think about how they then have antibodies and then their their systems are stronger for having gone through it so same thing with just not getting the virus but going through the motions of dealing with all of this stuff in its own way is a part of you know we're part of that reality so yeah Okay, next with, at 12.03, <laughs> on April 1st, happy April 1st, at 12.03, 1, 2, 3, on the 1st, getting into our Angels of Abundance, this is information coming in for April 2020 for our Earth Signs, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. First card, woo, woo, jumpy, jumpy. <laughs> what do we got here? Take a divinely guided chance. Oh, this is good. All positive change and successful ventures involve a degree of risk, and you are ready to follow your divine guidance to new territories. As you leave behind that which is comfortable and familiar but no longer appropriate for you, you make room for new and more meaningful opportunities. Imagine that. Next card, clean energy food. When you fuel your body with healthful organic diet, you increase your energy levels and ability to focus. This automatically leads to more efficiency, better ideas, and, and a higher vibration, which attracts golden opportunities and beneficial relationships. So it's all about keeping our vibe as high as possible eating uh, as healthy as you can. We you, you don't want to get stagnant and fat and eat a bunch of shit during this time because that's not going to help your immunity system. So this is about immunity. We want to we want to eat healthy, keep our energy up, all that stuff. Eat fruits, eat vegetables, make smoothies, 
roast vegetables, saute vegetables, eat, eat, eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. I'm just a lot of fruits and vegetables. Try to cut out as much meat as you can right now, just because it's heavy energy, your body needs to process. It's better that you don't deal with that in your body. Okay, and okay, next card, clearing debts. <laughs> Excuse me, that's funny. Clearing debts. Uh, let's read this. Your self-care involves removing the heavy burden of financial and emotional debts from your life. <laughs> You're ready to feel lighter and freer just by facing this topic and making a plan to clear present obligations and avoid future ones as well. So this is about clearing the energy of the pressure of having bills. This is taking on a new meaning today. While some people may be able to clear some debts and just make room energetically right now and maybe interest rates are getting low and it's a good time to, or however, you know, all that stuff works and it's a good time to, I don't know, whatever. It could be for some people that clearing some debts, this is the right time to do it. But for the most part, I'm seeing this as clear the energy of worrying about the debts. Just don't worry about the debts like all of the big 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 ones that require a lot of money or the thing you know just again just shift your perspective from and away from from worrying about debts and make arrangements i'm hearing there's a lot of things that can be done at this time during this situation that can help with with looming stresses about money. A lot of companies are taking, uh, doing uh, moratoriums and, and stopping the need to pay right now for months at a time if you contact your creditors in different places. So it's about that too, taking, taking, a po taking positive, proactive uh, approach to different debts that you might have and at the same time not letting it consume you because that's not gonna help okay let's get into the tarot with the hermetic tarot let's clear out these cards these are great cards i love these cards for the for the air uh sorry where are we <laughs> For the, uh, oh my gosh, I'm totally spaced here. For the air signs, oh my gosh, for the air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. That's where we're at right now, right? Are we? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I think I just, I just hit a wall. I just got stupid there for a second. I'm like, I know this is going on and... <laughs> For the air signs oh yes because okay so with the moon it was like oh air sign the moon is up in the sky air and then overcoming difficulties you see this angel flying up into the sky with air and then with the counselor card uh you are a natural counselor and many people benefit from your guidance and, and assurance uh there's a really cool picture of holding up this energy and and being and kind of integrating energy with somebody offering assistance so that that's really really cool because that's definitely what what we're going to need to be doing being a counselor to other people helping them out and sometimes we're going to need the, the counseling we're going to need to be there for each other okay Okay, what card is this? Four of Pentacles. Four of Pentacles. Lord of Earthly Power. Interesting. Lord of Earthly Power. The Four of Pentacles. Hmm. Let's get into this here with the Hermetic Tarot.
bear with me. I always have a hard time finding. I always have a hard time finding. That's wands. It's such a tiny little book too. Cups. Where the heck are the pinnacles? There they are. Three. Oh man. Four pinnacles. Okay, here we go. Could this be any smaller? Goodness gracious. My eyes. <laughs> Lord of earthly power. A hand at the bottom holds a branch of a rose bush without flowers or buds, except for the rose in the center, which is fully in bloom. At the top center is a radiant sun. Four discs appear in the card. Each disc is crowned with a winged disc. Uh, the four discs from the shape of a square, form a shape of a square. The centers of the discs have a swastika-type swats, hexagram symbolizing the union of the Mother Earth. The hexagrams are strange in their design to suggest the feeling of power. The symbol for Capricorn appears above. The Sun and, and Capricorn appear below. Sun in Capricorn, 20 to 30 degrees. Okay, and meanings. Material gain, success, rank, love of material wealth, earthly power completed, but lending to nothing or leading to nothing beyond. Suspicious, careful and orderly, discontented. Okay. Let's just give me a second here. So, and then in reverse, obstacles, lack of enterprise or originality, prejudice and setbacks. So, I am... I'm definitely feeling this energy here with uh, what I'm feeling here with this honestly is crossroad energy. This is a cross crossroad type energy, a, a needing to distribute evenly your energy. And again, this earthly power, this, material power so one way or another so there's decisions to be made about where to focus on and remember we started off with the angels of abundance with take a divinely guided chance so it said all positive change and successful ventures involve a degree of risk and you are ready to follow your divine guidance and into new territories. It's kind of like you have the opportunity to, to go one way or another with your frame of thought, your ideas and how you see the world and how you're going to move forward. It's a real crossroads uh, coming up and different possible ways to go or look at it or to, to venture, to get into different things. There's choices and opportunities within those choices. And it's truly about kind of dissecting and maybe reverse engineering what it is you want at the end, what it is, is going to, what is going to be the, what do you want to be the end result? I think is the best way to work this out going forward. Yeah. It'll make it definitely easier, especially in this new paradigm, this new shift and everything that's going on. There's so much uncertainty. 
and if we come from the understanding that this is going to take like to get into any kind of like normalcy or whatever is going to take several months if not a year or more. So we need to start thinking in, certain, in terms of innovation, coming up with different ways and enterprise and all that as, as we've talked about before. And working on, on these different things, taking in divinely guided chance, making these decisions, uh, I just feel like this is a lot of, of looking to where you've been and where you're going and, and there's definite, definite changes happening and to start to see these as a positive, positive changes. Things are different. We're just having to reorganize, re just think about different things in ways that that can be helpful to society, but also be in alignment with yourself and coming together with other people. Okay, I guess that's it for this one. And we're almost done. We have one more to go with the water signs. So let's take a few pictures here. moon cycles very very important you guys i'm hearing again just crystals 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 definitely if you haven't gotten into crystals start getting into crystals you guys it'll keep energy really uh it'll keep your energy as regulated as you know to really it'll really keep you regulated energetically let me put it that way man i'm having a hard time talking <laughs> Okay. We'll get into the water signs of Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Oops. Okay. So let's get these back together. We're going to jump right into our water signs with Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces for April 2020. Working with the Archangel Oracle for April 2020 for Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Okay, start to shuffle. We'll get our three cards for our water signs. Whoop. Three cards coming out all in a chunk. That was fast and easy. Let's see, what do we get here? Beloved one, clear audience, and sensitivity. All right, let's dive right in. Beloved one. With Shamuel, Archangel Shamuel, I'm helping you with your spiritual soulmate relationship. Clear audience with Zadkiel, notice the loving guidance you hear inside your mind and from other people. And sensitivity with Haniel, you are, are extra sensitive to energies and emotions right now. Honor yourself and your feelings. Okay. So... This one with I'm helping you with your spiritual soulmate relationship. This is, um, I'm hearing really, mm, this is about you getting into further and deeper contact with yourself and your soul, your soul mated divine relationship with your soul, not you and a soulmate or you and a, and a love partner. This is about the you, the self and listening and being guided to more of that. This is directly related to the sensitivity card. You are extra sensitive to energies and emotions right now. Honor yourself and your feelings. So these two things about connecting with your soul and being extra sensitive are going to start 
being very much in alignment with those two things. You're just sensitive to the to the energies of connecting spiritually, connecting to your soul, being divinely guided, understanding things on a soul base level, that sort of thing. This will also come through with, with Claire audience with Zadkiel here. Notice the loving guidance you hear inside your mind and some other people. So this is about hearing your, your spirit guides and being guided more, just ideas that may come in, messages, synchronicities, um, but also definitely hearing it in your, you'll notice and you hear things in your, like ideas that come through that are not your own, that, you, that just pop in there. Uh, <laughs> definitely are gonna be happening more, I'm feeling. And I'm being told to dive in here. Where's that book? To dive in here with the sensitivity card. Oh, opened right to it. Sensitivity is a beautiful and powerful gift, and there's no such thing as being too sensitive. Your sensitivity helps you know the truth about situations and people, and it's important for you to trust and follow these hunches, intuitions, and impressions. Spend some time alone in nature to further develop your sensitivity. Avoid harsh situations and chemicals. At home or at work, ask me to help you choose life-affirming foods, beverages, companions, and activities. Know that it's safe for you to feel deep emotions as they're part of your sensitivity. Visualize the two of us sealed in a beautiful blue, bluish-white light. This light dissolves any lower energies, transmuting them into love. The light also helps you distinguish beautiful between, sorry, the light also helps you distinguish between your own feelings and those of other people. So it's about, yeah, a lot of us, I was talking to a client today and uh, or I had an evaluation consultation with a new, a new client and and she's been feeling a lot of pressure in her chest and like her asthma's been starting to to act up and i said well you've been i go you think about people a lot right other people and she said yeah and i said you think about people a lot and you're also feeling this this thing this collective pressure in the chest and tightness in the throat that a lot of people are feeling that are extra sensitive and she said, yeah. And she said, well, I, I just thought it was a practical reason because we're, <clears throat> we're renovating, we're painting, we're doing stuff in the house. And I said, oh, that could be it. But it was more than that. It's, it's this overall energy. And so we can tap in collectively to those energies, just whether it's the actual physical feeling of, of having pressure in the chest and having, ha having it be hard to breathe, you know, in your throat, everything tightening up. Um, and, and that a lot of times we feel in our body, what's going on around us and it's not actually happening in our body. It's just a reflection, a mirror of what's going on in the collective. That is a really real thing. I know it sounds far fetched and crazy, but it's a really real thing that, that some of us experience, those of us that are much more energetically sensitive feel these things anyway we did a little mini clearing and healing um not even a healing but just a, a mini clearing and just working with her energy to cycle through and stuff and when we were done she's like oh i can i felt it get easier to breathe because i like immediately i'm like oh you're really tight in my throat like it's tight and she goes yeah it is she goes it just started up and i'm like yeah i could feel it and then when we were done, she was like, I feel, and I felt it in this little exchange of energy that we did. I was like, this is going to make you, this is going to help you breathe. And then we got out of that. She's like, yeah, I don't feel the tightness in my throat anymore. It's definitely easier to breathe now. So and that's perfect reason why I do these evaluations and do these little mini clearings on people so they can feel that really quickly in real time. But the point here is, is that we, uh, those of us that are extra sensitive really need to understand that. So if you need to go back and listen to what I just read about the sensitivity thing, please do. 
this is definitely going to be a thing for you um, water babies as you get closer and and feeling things more on a soul-based level you get more energetically sensitive it definitely happens it's a thing okay wow look at this let's take another card wow 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 look at these cards that came out with the angels of abundance we have for the second time successful funding so we had successful funding i believe that was with our uh fire signs i uh, don't it's all blending together for me now our fire I, I believe so but anyway we got it again successful funding your idea is divinely guided and supported by the same in, infinite wisdom of god that gave you the idea do not allow money concerns to prevent you from turning it into reality crowdfunding partnerships and other investments are available to you next card we have pay yourself first Make yourself your most important financial obligation by setting aside a portion of your income every time you are paid. This loving form of self-care ensures that you'll have savings to invest in your present and your future. And then last but not least here with the Angels of Abundance is do the work. It is not enough to dream or pray. You must also, or sorry, you've also got to take the positive action steps that you are being divinely guided to take consistently working on your priorities will make them flourish like a lush flower garden so yeah we 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 can't just sit back and be like okay i want i want all the change to, to come uh without doing the work to make it actually happen i think a lot of people <clears throat> excuse me a lot of people think this there's this thing that happens where you're just like okay I'm gonna think real positively and decide that I want these things it's just gonna magically manifest itself and it doesn't really work that way you've got to do the work but you have to have a positive attitude at the same time as you're doing the work and know that you're being guided to do the work for a reason you wouldn't be doing that you wouldn't be there for if it wasn't for a reason so you have to trim the Trim the fat of doubt and 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 anything holding you back because at this time everything might be scary to do or to venture into or to try something new. But this is actually the time to do it. And then back to pay yourself first. Make yourself your most. Uh, what does it say? Make yourself your most important financial obligation. Exactly. So it's kind of like what I was saying. Like, don't worry about all these bills that aren't that important. Everybody's in the same shit. Just let it go that you have to have this done and have to pay these bills and, and all that stuff. That's not necessarily the case. It's a lot of times a frame of, of thought. And we have to just let a lot of stuff go right now just because of, of thinking about what's important and keeping ourselves as healthy and sane, as balanced as we can possibly be. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to read about pay yourself first. This card is guiding you towards financial self-care through an ancient abundance secret, paying yourself first. While it is vitally important to, you, to your financial well-being to take care of your bills and other responsibilities, it is equally important to honor your debt to yourself. When you go to pay your bills, pay yourself. Common wisdom says that you should save 10% of each pay paycheck. Commit this money to be used only for responsible investing in your future. It's easy to justify not investing in yourself. It can seem egotistical or even wasteful. However, energetically paying yourself first offers up a prayer to the universe that says, I am worth it. I too deserve abundance, prosperity, and peace. I am a co-creator of my financial well-being and I accept nothing less from myself than what others expect from me. Paying yourself first also means other forms of self-care and treating yourself with the same respect and generosity that you would extend to a loved one. So I'm really seeing this with people deciding what's important to pay and what's not like okay where are the priorities 
and looking at all the bills that you have right now and deciding this is what I need to buy food to to buy my you know whatever your kids you your or this is what you know whatever the case is uh taking care of you and we're putting a different spin on this because we're in a different paradigm when it comes to paying bills so so the way that this was written was of course you need to pay your current bills but you need to pay yourself as well you need to put aside money and pay yourself first and take care of, of you and all that stuff well this is kind of really shifting that to you're the main priority in paying yourself and all of the other things that used to be a, a priority isn't anymore. So it's about shifting your, your thoughts into that. So we've been talking about that a lot right now. So same, same old thing, just really driving it home. We got a little bit of this in each one of the readings that it feels like. So this is something it tells me that really for the collective and we know this if you're paying it all attention everybody is worried about the economy the financial situation how nobody's working how people aren't used to getting the money that they used to and how are they going to survive and blah 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 and look you know our system at least is is set up to for people to to begin in these beginning stages to have put stops and blocks and holds on things from continuing so people are are feeling that so much of that pressure and for as messed up and corrupt and crazy as our government is or any government for that matter any government uh, <laughs> they are doing good things and they are trying and they are working on stuff and, and not everybody in government is evil and and they and there are people who who are trying to to make things as easy as possible and we just have to let things go decide that we're there's certain things we cannot control but we can choose again we can choose what our energy is what we're focusing on what we're being positive about what we're being realistic about what we're being truthful about what we're being authentic about and how we're spending our energy and what we're doing and where our focus is and how it needs to shift and change at this time more than ever it's absolutely mandatory that we stop resisting the current situation that we stop asking when is it going to change when is it going to go back to normal what is going on how am i going to you know all of these questions and just think about it lasting a long time and again i say this because it's it i think it i'm guided to, to share this because hopefully it'll help take some pressure off and we can start thinking of the long game the long haul in how we need to adjust our frame of mind our ways of living and thinking and doing because that's what's necessary and and a year isn't that long so let's if i'm wrong and it's nine months that's even shorter. If it's a little more than that, it's not, you know, like every, like it's not going to be the end of our world. It's going to be the end of things the way they were for a while, but it's up to us to decide how we handle these shifts and changes. And we hope more and more that our, our leaders, our governments, the people in charge will start to see things more clearly, take action more quickly, that again, there's going to be people stepping up to help that have always just taken care of themselves. Everything is changing. And so just know that for yourself deep down, meditate on it. And... A couple of, of words here at the end about my advice to you dealing with this, keeping yourself and your family as as sick free as you can for as long as you can. Uh, at this time, we need people to stay as healthy as they can stay and not overwhelm the system. So 
keep instead of six feet distance from people that you don't know and don't have history for and don't necessarily trust to be like, oh, I know that they're not contagious. We can't really say that about anybody. So we need to, <clears throat> we need to practice a certain level of, of social distancing. The guidelines are six feet. I recommend 12. I recommend wearing a mask when you're outside or around people that you don't know inside. So if you go to the grocery store or any place like that, wear a mask, keep your mask on. This helps you from inhaling particles, even if it's not a medical mask, it's not an N95 or whatever. It's not like the best mask you, you can get. Even if you just have a scarf or a bandana or any kind of mask around your mouth when you're out in public, it, it helps you from from inhaling the micro particles, it's going to activate the, the virus and have it do its thing in your upper respiratory um, system or deep in your lungs, which is even worse. But we, we have to think about it like let's just pretend we're all infected. We all have the part one of the contagion. And when we get into proximity and inhale part two, it activates it. This is the way I see it. So we have all kind of already inhaled the active or the dormant part of the virus. The second part is coming into the active contagion. And so what happens is you inhale that active contagion, you have inside your system already the fuel that it's gonna feed off of. It's just waiting for, the, for it to come in and start to feed off of that. And, and that's how that works it's in a, and it just progresses. So we wanna stop part two from happening coming in and doing what it needs to do. So again, practice social distancing, stay away from people. It does isn't when I say stay inside, that means stay away from people. Like don't just go places you don't need to go. Don't commingle with people and their energy you don't need to commingle with. If you can avoid being around people that you that are around other people, you want to do that uh, because it is so very contagious. One person with a flu can be responsible for up to 14 people of getting them, getting up to 14 people sick. With COVID, it's potentially over 59,000 people that one person can be responsible for because of the way that it multiplies. It's super important that we respect this super contagion and give our society, our medical system as long as possible to deal with people that are going to be getting sick and are already sick in these next few weeks and months. And let's try to do the best that we can to be smart about how we're dealing and handling this and not put, put ourselves and other people at risk. Now, with that said, once again, I can help you if you get sick or if you have a loved one that is tested positive, if they're showing signs like fever, chills, body aches, or, or shortness of breath or a cough, please don't let it get too far past that because this does move very quickly. And it's easier to help you feeling better, stronger, faster if we get to you sooner. So please don't hesitate. Please contact me. It's on a pay what you can, when you can basis. So there's no excuse not to work with me except for, I guess, I don't know, pick a, pick a reason out of a hat. But, but from my perspective, it's a no-brainer, at least to look into what I can do for you or, or who I am and what I've already done with people. So I am definitely somebody who can help, and I look forward to doing that. <clears throat> with all that said, family, thank you so much for being here. We're going to wrap this up now. I really appreciate you being here with me. Happy April. Keep a positive outlook. Keep your immune system up. Keep your, your charge positive. And I will see you soon. Infinite love and blessings. Don't forget, the key is to create. I love you already and always live in love. Bye, guys.